So today we're going to continue the discussion of uh, the compressive strength of rocks. And, you know, so last Friday we talked a lot about the Bohr Coulomb failure criterion and different yield surfaces. So we're just going to sort of continue that discussion. <coughs> so if you, record, uh, if you recall, you know, the true Bohr failure envelope is this. You know, if you, if you draw, if you do a series of tests so that you get these different Mohr circles for different ratios of confining pressure to axial pressure, you get those different Mohr circles, then the true Mohr failure envelope is the line that's tangent to all those circles. Right. And then what we talked about last week was that if we just sort of linearize it, we take the the best fit straight line to all those tangent points. That's how we come up with the with the the Moore Coulomb failure criterion, the Moore criterion. Okay, but if we go back and we look at you know something that's a bit better a bit better approximation would be, you know, we like the linear because it's just a straight line. It's easy. We can fit that with two parameters: the cohesion, you know, which is essentially the the y-intercept of that line and the internal friction, which is the slope of that line. But if we go back then and say we want a little bit better model, we could possibly try to fit that line. And if you look at, you know, if, if I were to extend that line, the one I'm drawing in red here, sort of this way, then you might say that that line sort of looks like a parabola. Right? So we could possibly have a little bit better approximation if we fit the parabola instead of the straight line. And if we do that, then there's a model called the Hoke-Brown Hoke criteria. So that's just a parabolic fitting. So again, it's just a function of the because it's, it's really just fitting those circles. And remember, those circles are just dependent upon the maximum and minimum principal stresses, or sigma 1 and sigma 3. Right? So the model's still just a function of sigma 1 and sigma 3, just like the more Coulomb model. Uh, it's just now you need a few more parameters to fit. Right? And so C0 is, is still the unconfined compressive strength. Uh, but then you have these new fitting parameters, M and S, okay? So they depend on the rock properties and degree of fracture. And, fracture, and there are, uh, here's some typical values for different types of rocks, for values of M. And then S is sort of this um, parameter that goes from 0 to 1, where 1 would be a completely, completely homogeneous, intact rock, and 0 would be a completely granulated rock, so like a sand. And so varying in between depending upon the number of faults and fractures and how intact the rock is. Okay. 